We begin in Samastii equal standing pose. Stand tall with your feet together, legs flexed, shoulders back and down with a long spine. On an inhale, raise the arms to the sky. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, up halfway. Exhale, hands down to the floor, step back to plank and lower the body down. Press the tops of the feet, raise the chest for upward facing dog. Curl the toes, hips up and back for it, downward facing dog. In down dog, your feet are hips distance apart. Hands are shoulder width apart. I want you to press well into the knuckle pads of the hands, especially the index and the thumb area. All while pressing the chest back towards the thighs and breathing deeply. Walk forward till the feet are between the hands and inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, fold all the way forward and on the inhale, raise the arms to the sky. Hands back down by your side. Again, inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, up halfway. Exhale, step back to plank pose, top of a push up and lower the body down. Take your upward facing dog. Hips up and back for downward facing dog. And we breathe deeply. Filling up the lungs for one. Again, for two. Breathe deeply for three. Again, for four. Look forward, walk the feet forward till the feet are between the hands. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, fold all the way forward. And on an inhale, raise the arms to the sky. Hands back down by your side. Again, inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, up halfway. Exhale, stepping back to plank pose and lowering the body down. Inhale, raise the chest for upward dog. Curl the toes, hips up and back for downward facing dog. Try to remain present during the practice. If the mind starts to wander, bring the mind back to the sound and the pace of the breath. Just breathe deeply, fully expanding the lungs. A couple more breaths here. Let's walk forward. Inhale up halfway, exhale, fold all the way forward, and on the inhale, raise the arms to the sky way, way up, and then hands back down by your side. Again, inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, hands down to the floor, step back to plank and lower the body down. Take your up dog, hips up and back for downward facing dog. And we breathe deeply. Breathe for two. Again, three. Breathe for four. Again, for five. Let's walk the feet forward till the feet are between the hands. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold all the way forward. And on the inhale, raise the arms to the sky way, way up. And then hands back down by your side. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, we fold forward. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, hands down to the floor. Step back to plank and lower the body down. Take your up dog. Hips up and back for downward facing dog and breathe deeply. Downward facing dog is a halfway inverted position. It inverts the internal organs, increases blood flow to the head and to the upper body. We'll take just a few more breaths here and we'll go to Surya Namaskar B after this. Let's come forward, inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold all the way forward, and on an inhale, raise the arms to the sky way, way up, and then hands back down by your side. Let's take chair pose now. Fold forward. Inhale, up halfway. Exhale, 
Step back to plank and lower the body down. Take your upward facing dog, hips up and back for downward facing dog. Bring the right foot forward between the hands. Raise the torso, raise the arms for warrior one on the right side. Hands back down to the floor, step back to plank and lower the body down. Take your up dog, hips up and back for downward facing dog. Bring the left foot forward between the hands. Raise the torso, raise the arms to the sky for warrior one again. Hands back down to the floor, stepping back to plank, lower the body down. Take your up dog, hips up and back for downward facing dog. And we breathe deeply. Two. Three. Four. Just walk the feet forward, inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold all the way forward and then finish with chair pose. And then hands back down by your side. Samastihi. Again, chair pose. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, hands down to the floor. Step back to plank. Lower the body down. Upward facing dog. Hips up and back for downward facing dog. Right foot forward between the hands. Raise the torso. Raise the arms for warrior one. Hands back down to the floor. Stepping back to plank. Lower the body down. Raise the chest for up dog, hips up and back for down dog, left foot forward between the hands, raise your torso, raise the arms for warrior one again, hands back down to the floor, stepping back to plank, lower the body down, take an up dog, hips up and back for down dog, and we breathe deeply here. Fully expanding the lungs, taking in as much oxygen as you can. Couple more breaths here. Look forward, come forward, feet between the hands. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold all the way forward. Finish with chair pose and come back to Samastii equal standing pose. Chair pose. Fold forward. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, hands down to the floor, lowering down the plank. Raise the chest for upward facing dog. Hips up and back for downward facing dog. Right foot forward between the hands. Raise the torso, raise the arms to the sky. Hands back down to the floor, step back to plank, lower the body down. Take your up dog. Hips up and back for downward facing dog. Left foot forward between the hands. Raise the arms, raise the torso, hands up, hands back down to the floor, step back to plank, lower the body down, take upward facing dog, downward facing dog, and we breathe deeply. So our last sun salute be, body's nice and warm now, heart rate is up, we're definitely ready for standing asanas that are coming up next. Couple more breaths here. Look forward, walk forward, inhale up halfway, exhale, fold all the way forward, and we finish with a strong chair pose, and hands back down by your side, Samastii, equal standing pose. Nicely done. From Samastitihi, equal standing pose, spread your feet about hips distance apart for Parangushtasana. Hands on hips, inhale your chest up. And exhale, fold forward, grab your big toes. Inhale, extend your chest halfway, and exhale, fold forward, drop your head, drop your neck. Your legs are nice and strong, and you're pressing evenly into both feet. And as you lift up your sitting bones, you want to drop your chest. Roll your shoulders up your back, breathing. One more deep breath. Our next pose is Parangushtasana, so inhale halfway and exhale one at a time, slide your hands under your feet. Inhale, extend your chest and exhale, fold forward your head again. This is just a little deeper stretch. Your padas are your feet and your hastas are your hands, so it's literally putting your hands under your feet. 
And now you take three more smooth breaths. Roll your shoulders up your back. Two more. Last one. Inhale, come up halfway. And exhale, hands on your hips. Inhale, come up all the way to standing. Step your feet back together for Samastitihi, equal standing pose. Now, take a wide step to your right for Utita Trikonasana. You're going to step your right foot out. Your feet are about one leg's distance apart. Turn your right foot to 90 degrees, and then shift your hips back and bring your right hand down wherever it lands, shin, foot. If you're advancing, you can grab your big toe. Dig into your back heel, extend through your left side, and pull your left arm straight up to the sky. Look up at it, your chin, into your chest, and your eyes on your hand. Take another breath and then inhale, come up, turn your right toes in, turn your left toes out, and exhale, left side, Utita Trikonasana, extended triangle pose. Your left hand can either come to the shin, and like I said, the big toe is the goal. Look up at your right arm and reach long through both arms so that they're nice and straight and lots of extension. Now bend your left knee. Inhale, come up all the way to standing. Hands on your hips. Turn your right toes out. Turn your left toes in. Step your left foot a little closer for Pavrita Trikonasana. Fold forward. Bring your left hand down to the ground. And inhale, your right arm goes up to the sky. This is revolved triangle pose. Turn your belly to the right. Turn your mid back. Now turn your upper, upper chest. And in all this twisting, still pay attention to your breathing. Deep inhales and exhales. Taking one more deep breath. Inhale, come up all the way to standing. Now pivot and turn to your left side. Square your hips. Inhale your chest up. And exhale, your right hand goes down. Inhale, your left arm goes up. Breathing. One. Two. Three, four, five. Now from here, bend your knee. Inhale, come up all the way to standing. And exhale, step forward, back to the front of your mat, Samas Titihi, equal standing pose. Now take a much wider step out to your right for Utita Pajvakanasana, extended side angle pose. Bend your right knee over your ankle and then extend your left arm up and over in that nice long angle. Breathing. One. Don't forget to press into the back heel. And then reach through the left fingertips. Four. Five. Inhale, come up all the way to standing. Turn your right toes in, turn your left toes out. Bend your left knee over your ankle. Bring your left hand down and your right arm goes up and over in a long angle, pulling long ways all the way from your hip to your fingertips. Two, three, four, five. Inhale, come up all the way to standing. Now turn to your right side for Pavrita Pajvakanasana, Ravad side angle pose. Bend your knee over your ankle, hands to heart. Turn your belly to the right, and now place your left elbow to the outside of your right thigh. Keep turning your belly with the leverage of your left elbow against your right thigh. Good. Keep breathing. Two more breaths. Extend that back leg nice and long. Awesome. Now inhale. Come up all the way to standing. Turn and pivot to your left side. Left foot to 90 degrees. Bend your left knee over your ankle. Hands at heart. Turn your belly. Bring your right elbow to the outside of your left thigh. Mm -hmm. Nice. Now keep turning the belly, keep cranking, but press deeply into the back leg. Breathing. Inhale, come up all the way to standing. And exhale, step forward to the front of your mat, Samas Titihi. Now take a wide step to your right for the Prasarita Padottanasanas. Hands on your hips, inhale your chest up, 
and exhale, fold forward. Bring your hands right in between your feet. Inhale, halfway, extend your chest, and then exhale, fold forward, drop your head, your neck all the way down. If your head touches the ground, that's great. Eventually, it will. Breathing two, strong legs lifting up the bones you sit on. Three, four, five. Inhale, halfway extend your chest. Exhale, hands on your hips, bend your knees. Inhale, come up all the way to standing. And exhale, release your hands. Inhale, arms to a T. Exhale, hands clasp your waist. Inhale, chest up. And exhale, fold forward. Drop your head down to the ground or towards the ground. Be sure to squeeze your elbows in towards the line of your spine. Again, strong legs, strong arms, and you're letting gravity pull your chest down. Breathing, that's the most important part. Inhale, bend your knees, come up all the way to standing. Exhale, release your arms. Inhale, arms to a T. Exhale, clasp your hands, interlace your fingers behind your back, reach your hands down, lift your chest up. And on your next exhale, fold forward, lift the clasped hands up and over as you go. Squeeze in your tricep muscles so you can make those arms nice and straight. One day your hands will eventually touch the ground. Three more breaths. Last two. And then last one. Now bend your knees. And then inhale, come up all the way to standing. Nice. One last Prasarita Pradhatanasana, wide-legged forward fold. Hands on hips. Inhale, chest up. Exhale, fold forward. Grab your big toes. Peace fingers go around the big toe, in between the big toe and the second toe. And the thumbs are right in the center of the two big toes. Squeeze your elbows out to the sides. And lift your shoulders up your back. Two. Breathing three. Four, five, bend your knees, inhale, come up halfway, extend your chest, exhale, hands on your hips, just pause, inhale, come up all the way to standing, and then exhale, step forward, back to the front of your mat, Samas Titihi, equal standing pose. Parjvatanasana. Take your hands behind your back in reverse prayer pose or grab elbow to elbow. Now step your right foot back and turn to face your right foot. Square your hips, inhale your chest up and exhale, fold forward over your straight right leg. Keep breathing, lifting up your right cheek gently. Try to imagine that your hips are in one straight line. Take one more deep smooth breath Bend your knee and inhale, come up. And now just pivot to your left side. If you've got elbows, switch, put the opposite elbow on top. Inhale your chest up and exhale, fold forward over your straight left leg this time. Drop your head last. Again, swivel your right hip forward. Gently bring your left hip back. Breathing. Two more, big smooth breath. Last one. Now bend your knee. And inhale, lift your chest up, and exhale, step forward, samastitihi. Balancing. From samastihi, raise the right foot and grab it with two fingers of the right hand, extending the leg out in front of you. Or just raise your knee waist high. The standing leg should be strong and straight, but not locked. Udhita hasta parangustasana, extended hand to big toe pose. Breathing deeply. We're going to take the leg out to the side, tighten the stomach for a good center of gravity, and gaze at a stationary object. We'll take a couple more breaths here. Then returning the leg in front of you, release the leg and extend the leg out in front, pressing the hands well into the waist. Slowly releasing the pose. And we'll now go to the other side. Left hand to left foot or left knee raises up to waist high. Again, keeping a tight stomach for a good center of gravity. 
focusing on a stationary object, breathing deeply to relax the mind. We'll slowly take the leg out to the side, still standing tall, shoulders back and down. A few more breaths here. Return the leg to the front, release it, and extend the leg out in front of you, strong and straight. Just for a few more breaths. And then slowly the release the balance leg. is Ardha Bada Padma Tanasana, Bound Half Lotus Pose. Take your right foot to your left hip flexor or right ankle over left knee like Tommy's doing and fold forward. If you can, bind the right hand to the right big toes like Sammy. Either way is good. Drop your head, drop your neck. You should be feeling a deep stretch in your outer right hip Strong standing leg. Inhale halfway. Exhale, pause. Inhale, come up all the way and release the right foot. Now let's do the left side. Left foot to the hip flexor or left ankle over right thigh. Binding or not, folding forward with one or both hands. Drop your head last, breathing. Keep your right leg that you're standing on super strong. Breathing into the back of your lungs. Using your low pit of your belly to help you balance. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, pause. Release your left foot. Samasitihi, step forward. Inhale, your arms to the sky. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway extend your chest. Exhale, walk or jump back. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, back to downward dog. Now jump or step both feet forward for Utkatasana. Sit down way low. This is chair pose. Bend your knees. Tuck your tailbone down to the ground. Lift your frontal hip bones up into your waist. Lift both sides of your waist and your hands up to the sky. Look up. Now exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway extend. Exhale, walk or jump back. Inhale, upward dog, Urdhva Mukha. Exhale, Adho Mukha, downward facing dog. Right foot forward for warrior one pose, Virabhadrasana one. Inhale, the arms up to the sky, touch palms. Press into your back leg strongly as you bend your right knee over your ankle. Lift up long through your spine all the way up to your fingertips and look up at your thumbs. Take one more deep, smooth breath. Now straighten your right leg, turn your right toes in, turn your left toes out, bend your left knee over your ankle, and press strongly into your back leg. Tailbone points down, lifting up through both sides of your waist all the way up to your fingertips. Look up at your thumb. Next is Warrior Two, Virabhadrasana Two. Take your arms out to a T, Remaining with your left knee bent over your ankle, your right leg is straight. Now your hips are open out to the right side of your mat, gazing over your left fingertips. Breathing. One more. Now straighten your left toes. Turn your right toes out. Bend your right knee over your ankle. Gaze over your right fingertips. Shrug your shoulders down your back. Let that energy go all the way down to your tailbone, pointing straight down to the ground. Now windmill your hands down to the floor, step back, lower your body. Inhale through your back bend, exhale to downward dog, jump through to seated. Dandasana or staff pose. Sit up straight with the legs extended out in front of you. The feet are flexed back towards the shins. You're sitting up tall, the shoulders are back and down. The crown of the head is reaching for the ceiling, and the chin is level with the floor. All while breathing deeply, fully expanding the lungs, and preparing for Paschimottanasana, our forward fold. So reaching forward for the toes. Take an inhale, focusing on a long spine. Exhale, fold forward any amount. The peace fingers are clasping the big toes of both feet. 
And if this is too much for you, then you can hold the ankles or the shins with straight legs and a long spine. Still breathing very deeply. Filling up the lungs. Pressing the legs well into the floor. A few more breaths here. Last one. And then slowly releasing the pose. We're going to reach around the outside of the feet to see if we can get a little bit more of a stretch here. So again, grab the sides of the feet. Fold forward any amount, feeling the stretch, and still breathing very deeply. If there is discomfort in the low back, you can bend the knees. And if that still doesn't um, relieve the discomfort, I would release the pose. The benefits here is that this stretches the spine long enough to allow life force to flow through the entire body. Last breath, and then slowly release. From Dandasana, we prepare for Triang Mukha Ekapada Paschimottanasana, three parts of the body stretch. We're going to bend the right knee and place the right foot next to the right hip with the top of the right foot touching the floor. Inhale. Extending the spine long, fold forward, reaching for the foot of the extended leg. All while breathing deeply, focusing on a long spine. If you can't grab your foot, you can grab the ankle or the shin. And if it feels like you're falling over to one side, then you can elevate the left hip with a prop. Still breathing deeply, pressing the left leg well into the floor. We slowly release and prepare to go to the other side. Bending the left knee, putting the left foot on the outside of the left hip, and then fold forward. The regular practice of this asana makes the whole body more supple and agile. It tones the abdominal organs, aids in digestion, and creates flexibility in the knee joint. I'm going to take a few more breaths here. Fully expanding the lungs. Taking in as much oxygen as you can. Slowly releasing the pose, and we'll prepare for a jump back, jump through. So just cross the ankles, jump back to Chaturanga, lowering the body down. Take your upward facing dog, hips up and back for down dog, and then jump back through to seated. Janyu Shirsasana, head to knee pose. Bend the right leg, place the sole of the right foot against the inside of the left thigh. Turn the belly button towards the left leg slightly, and then fold forward any amount, grasping the left leg. Focusing on a long spine and breathing very deeply. If there is soreness in the bent knee, you can move the foot down towards the calf area, or use a block to elevate the right knee. If discomfort still persists, I would release the pose. Continue to breathe deeply. We have just a few more breaths here. Last one. As we slowly release and then transition to the other side.
So we're bending the left leg, placing the sole of the left foot against the inside of the right thigh. Turn the tummy towards the right leg and then fold forward any amount, grabbing the right foot with both hands. Press the right leg well into the floor, focus on a long spine, and continue to breathe deeply. One of the benefits of the pose here is it stretches the spine, eases stiffness in the leg muscles and in the hip joints, and it also increases flexibility in all the joints of the arms, from the shoulders all the way to the knuckles. Continue to press the right leg down to the floor. Still breathing deeply. Just a few more breaths here. As we slowly release and prepare for a jump back, jump through, cross the legs, jump back to Chaturanga, lower down, take your upward facing dog, hips up and back for downward facing dog, and then jump through to seated. Our next pose is Marichiyasana A. From Dandasana, staff pose. You're gonna go ahead and bend your right knee and hug it into your chest. Place the foot down as if you're standing on it. Reach your right arm on the inside of the leg and your left arm around the back of you. Hopefully your hands will touch. If not, a strap will come in handy. And now fold forward. It's not how low you go. It's about how long you extend your spine. And of course, your breath is your number one priority. Keep breathing, expanding on each inhalation the lungs contract on your exhalation. Pay special attention to your left toes that they point straight up to the sky. And if you can, even spread your toes out. One more deep breath. Now, when you're ready, look up at your left foot and exhale, let go of your hands. Good. Straighten out your right leg. Bend your left knee. Reach your left arm on the inside of your left leg. Wrap it around the front of your shin. Take your right arm in back of you for the bind. Bind your hands. If you can, you're going to grab the left hand to the right wrist. Good. Again, your right leg is super straight. The toes point up to the sky. And you're reaching your chest out long ways over your right leg. Keep breathing. As you expand through your inhale, reach forward. As you contract through your exhale, see if you can go a little further down. Inhale to expand. And exhale to contract. Now, one more breath. And then from here, look up at your right foot. Exhale, release your bind. Good. Cross your ankles. Place your hands down on the ground. Jump back to Chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. And exhale to downward facing dog. Jumping right back through to seated. Awesome work. Marichiyasana B. The next pose, you're going to, it's going to be a lot like A, but we're going to change the leg positioning. So first you'll take your left leg into half lotus pose. That's where your left foot comes into your right hip flexor. If that's not possible, you're going to follow Tommy's modification where you place your left foot underneath your right cheek. Hug your right knee in, place the right sole of the foot down as if you're standing on it. Reach your arm on the inside with the right and left arm and back for the same bind we did before. Exhale to fold forward. Five breaths. Keep your breath smooth and going. The pose is named after Marichi. He was a sage, and he represented wind. Funny yogi joke that he takes your breath away. Keep your breath going. See if you can fight the power of Marichi. Take two more deep breaths. Last one. Now inhale, look up, and exhale, let go of your hands. Switch sides. 
This time, your right foot will come into half lotus pose like Sammy's doing. Or you can take your right foot under your left cheek like Tommy's doing. Take your left arm on the inside of your left leg, wrap it around your shin, and take your right arm in back of you to bind hands, wrists, whatever. Exhale, fold forward. This is another wonderful place to possibly keep a strap. If your hands don't bind at first, don't worry, they will eventually. Just keep trying. Inhale, nice long spinal extension. Exhale, folding, reaching your head down towards the ground. The head's going to land right in the center of the legs. Inhale, extending. Exhale, folding forward. And be inspired by the blowing wind. Inhale, lifting, and exhale, letting go. Now inhale, look up, and exhale, release your hands. One more time, place your hands on the ground for a jump back. Inhale, upward dog or vimukha, and exhale, downward dog. From downward facing dog, we're going to go into bakasana, the crow pose. It's an arm balance. Mm -hmm. So now, walk your feet forward to be behind your hands. Bend your elbows and bend your knees. Aim your knees up high towards your underarms. You're making a little shelf from your forearms all the way from the elbows up to your armpits. Now, from here, start to lift up your feet, but remember to look forward the entire time. That keeps you balanced. Mm -hmm. Breathing, jump back, exhale. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, back to downward dog. And now immediately jumping through to seated for Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose. Bring the soles of your feet together, separate your knees apart. Draw your feet in close to your groins. Lift up your chest, make a nice long spine. And then on the next exhalation, fold forward. Take that long spine with you. Drop your head, drop your neck. Keep on breathing. Feel the breath inhaling into the back and bottom of your lungs. On your exhale, you let gravity do some of the work sinking down towards the ground. There's no rule that says you have to touch your head to the ground. You certainly won't become enlightened from touching your head down to the ground. It's all about breathing. Keep it going, your big, stately breath. Take one more. And now, on the next inhalation, come up all the way. Cross your ankles for a jump back. Take yourself back to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale up to Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. And exhale back to Downward Dog Adho Mukha Svanasana. We finish by jumping back to seated Dandasana. In Dandasana, we prepare for Upavista Konasana, seated angle pose, or wide-legged forward bend. We open the feet wide with the legs straight. Hold the sides of the feet with your hands. Inhale to create a long spine. Exhale, fold forward, taking the chest to chin towards the floor. If this is too challenging for you, you can hold the ankles, the shins, or just place the hands on the floor between the two legs. When folding forward, it's important to keep the knees pointing towards the ceiling. Okay. And like all stretches, find your range of motion on the stretch, back off slightly, and then recreate the stretch over the next few breaths. Continue to breathe deeply, fully expanding the lungs, feeling the stretch, sending the oxygen to the area of the stretch. A few more breaths here. As we slowly release the pose and prepare for a jump back, jump through, jump back to Chaturanga, raise the chest for upward facing dog, hips up and back for downward facing dog, and then jump through to seated, and we'll prepare for Supta Parangustasana after this. Lying on your back, we prepare for Supta Parangustasana. Reclining big toe pose. Raise the right leg and grab the right big toe with two fingers of the right hand. Keeping the leg straight, place the left hand on the left thigh. And if you can't reach the big toe, you can grab the ankle or the shin or use a strap. 
keep the quads flexed and this will help the hamstrings to release and breathe deeply. Fully expanding the lungs, bringing in as much oxygen as you can and sending the oxygen to the stretch as we slowly lower the leg out to the right. Keep the legs straight. If you're holding the ankle or shin, you can bend the right leg and hold the knee as it opens out to the right. Do your best to keep the hips level and look to the left and continue to breathe deeply. Feeling the stretch, fully expanding the lungs. As we slowly come back to center, and we prepare to go to the other side. So we're going to raise the left leg and we grab the big toe of the left foot with the left hand and place the right hand on top of the right thigh. Keeping both legs strong and straight. Continue to breathe deeply. Feeling the stretch. Couple more breaths here. Slowly letting the leg out to the left. Suttapati Gustasana is a great pose for low back stiffness or low back aches. And it's a great stretch for the hamstrings and calves as well. Do your best to keep the uh, hips level. Remain present, breathing deeply. Feeling the stretch, just a couple more breaths here. Bring the leg back to center, and then we slowly release the pose. Our next pose is Bridge Pose, Satubandha Sarvangasana. Bend both of your knees while you're lying here on your back. Place your feet right in front of your hips. And then tuck your shoulders underneath you, right shoulder, left shoulder. Inhale, lift your hips up. Clasp your hands under your low back. Dig into your inner heels, the big toe mounds, to lift your hips up. Dome your chest up towards your chin. Lying the tops of your shoulders down on the ground, press down the tips of your shoulders, your outer shoulders. Breathe your lungs up into your chin. Take one more breath. And then we're going to release our hands out from underneath us. We're going to roll down slowly. Now you have the opportunity to stick with bridge pose like Tommy's going to do. Or you can go to Urdhvajanyarasana, the back bend, like Sammy's doing. Press your hands down into the ground and lift up into upward facing bow pose. The same principles apply in both these poses. You want to press into your inner heels. Lift your hips up nice and high. Your chest should be broad collarbones apart, and shoulder blades together in the center of your back. Keep on breathing. Expand your breath through the front of your lungs and the back of your lungs. Now slowly come down. Straighten out your legs. In order to counterbalance these poses, these back bends we just did, we're going to do a forward fold, Paschimottanasana. This is the perfect counterbalance for back bends. Straighten out your legs, reach for your toes, and exhale, fold forward. It's very important to counterbalance the back bends we did to let your spine know that everything's all good. Your breath is so important, so keep on breathing deeply in through your nose, out through your nose. This is called Ujjayi Pranayama, and it's the way that we breathe in almost all of our yoga postures, unless we're told otherwise. Keep on expanding your spine. Send your breath right down to your spine, each and every vertebra 
is going to receive this energy of breath. Continue breathing deeply, allowing the gravity of your chest to fall down to the floor. Your legs are strong. Inhale, look up. Exhale, let go. Lying on your back, preparing for shoulder stand, Salamba Sarvangasana. Rock the legs up and over to come onto your shoulders. Extend the feet towards the sky with the toes pointed. Support the back with both palms close to the spine. And if this is too difficult for you, you can leave the hips on the floor and just extend the legs up and the feet towards the sky. Remaining here for 10 to 15 breaths, the bulk of the weight should be distributed across the shoulders, the upper arms and elbows. Use the hands against the spine to create length and continue to breathe deeply. Inversions like this bring a rejuvenating supply of blood to the upper body, and especially to the brain, sharpening memory and improving concentration. We'll slowly lower the legs down for plow pose. Lower the legs down to the floor overhead. Keep the legs straight. Straighten the arms, pulling the hands down to the floor. Continue to breathe deeply as we take a few more breaths here in plow pose. Let's lower the knees now, down towards the floor and close to the ears for Karnapidasana, ear pressure pose. Continuing to breathe deeply. Just a few more breaths here. So we'll straighten the legs now and then slowly roll down to a reclining position and we'll prepare for fish pose matsyasana. So with the hands under the hips, come up onto your elbows, arch the back, lift the chest, and then bring the crown of the head back towards the floor. Continue to breathe deeply. This is also a good place for a lion's breath to clear the throat. And then we slowly release the pose. And we'll roll over, come up to all fours in preparation for our next asana. Roll over to one side, towards the camera. And slowly come up. And we're gonna put ourselves into all fours. From all fours, we're gonna come down for a headstand, Shir Shasana. Bring your forearms down to the ground. Grab elbow to elbow for a measuring tool. Keep your elbows exactly where they are and now clasp your hands. Interlace all ten fingers. Keep your clasp open so that you can cradle the back of your head. And then place the crown of your head on the floor. Tuck your toes under, lift your hips up, and then lift up one leg very straight to the sky. The other leg should come up naturally. Balancing on your forearms, your wrists, really press down deeply so that your head barely touches the ground. You should be able to slide a piece of paper under the crown of your head. That's how much you're pressing down. Straighten your legs, squeeze them together to lift way up. You can do this against a wall to begin with for confidence. Breathing. Don't forget about breathing. That's a really big deal. Keep on expanding through your breath. Now exhale, slowly come down, either with one or both legs. Bring your feet down to the ground, knees down to the ground, and sit back for Balasana, child's pose. This is a counterbalance for headstand. Drop your head to the ground, reach your hands out in front of you. Relax your hips back to your heels. Breathe. Still breathing is the most important part of your practice. Feel the breath 
Fill the back and the bottom of your lungs. Headstand is the father of all poses, and this balasana, child's pose, allows you to relax your neck from the headstand. So it's very important. Now slowly come up, and we're going to the most important pose of all, Shavasana, corpse pose. At the end of every yoga practice, we let go, we give up the practice. And this is very important because the next time you step on your mat, you'll be reborn again into this practice. Let your feet fall over to the sides. Let go of your outer body. The outer body is termed anamaya kosha, the outer sheath. Let go of your breath. That's called pranamaya kosha, the pranic body or the energy body. Let go of your mind, which is mana maya kosha, and your intellect, vijnana maya kosha. And then you get to the deepest part of your being, which is called ananda maya kosha. Ananda translates to bliss in the Sanskrit language. And this is you here in your bliss body, relaxed peaceful, and mostly free. You've traveled your whole entire yoga practice to be here. Take your time. Let this yoga sink in. Now, take a deep breath in through your nose. Start to stretch your limbs long, arms overhead. Gently awakening. Bend both knees. And roll over to one side for fetal position. When your body tells you it's ready, come all the way to seated. Sitting at the front of your mat, bring your hands to your heart. Bow your chin into your chest. With gratitude, we take our hands through our third eye and we fold forward. Grateful. And we come up. Namaste. Namaste.